Today on Straight Talk, the topic is flies, like the flies that you see flying around you from time to time. There are many varieties of flies. There's the small fast fly, there's the big fat slow fly, there's quiet flies and noisy flies. Uh, no matter which type you encounter in your home or office, when you see one, you chase it down, it is, it's invaded and it must die. That's how I look at flies anyway. But Jennifer Gordon, who's with us today, she's our resident urban and medical entomologist with Bug Lessons Consulting. Jennifer, you know a thing or two about flies, I believe. Are there any interesting things to know? Absolutely, Jeff. So we talked about small flies a few months ago, and today we're going to talk about bigger flies. But before I get into the, some of the topics that we always talk about, you know, let's talk about some of the cool things that these bigger flies can do. So for me, the first thing that comes to mind is forensics. You know, some of the flies we're talking about today grow in dead flesh. So some forensic experts can use these flies to help solve crimes such as murder. Another cool aspect about some of these flies is their application in medicine. And there's something called maggot debridement therapy or MDT, where live laboratory raised maggots are placed on wounds and these fly larvae remove dead flesh and pathogenic microorganisms and ultimately clean the wound and reduce infection. You know, unfortunately, flies can also be pests, which is what we're going to be talking about today. But I think it's important to remember that the vast majority of flies in general don't really bother people. There's something like 18,000 different species in North America, and only about 200 or so have the potential to be pests. And while that is a lot, that means only around 1% of flies pose a potential problem to people. And today, you know, we're talking about bigger flies, and we're really talking about many different species and several different groups, such as house flies, bottle flies blow flies, cluster flies, face flies, and maybe even some others. And I know I just rattled off a bunch of different terms, but the important takeaway here is that working with a pest management professional may be necessary to help solve some of these more challenging fly infestations because different species may require different tactics. However, there is a ton that cleaning professionals and building maintenance can do to protect buildings from these big flies. Okay, Jennifer, that's interesting stuff. Now, I know when I open a door and a fly comes in, that's pretty simple. Tell us about how flies get in besides an open door. Well, excellent question. And actually the open door is, is probably one of the, the most common ways that they get in. You know, the majority of your big flies are gonna be coming in from the outside. And depending on the fly and the time of the year, they may be trying to get away from the cold or they may be attracted to some odor. So the immature flies or maggots grow in different environments such as fermenting or decaying matter, but they can grow on all sorts of different materials such as meat, dead animals, excrement or poop, garbage, and even earthworms. And occasionally these flies may be coming from inside, but in these instances, they're probably growing in garbage or trash compactors, or maybe in a dead animal trapped in a wall void. Okay. Just how bad can it get in a home or office? Yeah, that really depends. You know, outside flies can get really bad if the environmental conditions they have are there and they have enough food and inside the same can be true. You know, you may only have one or two irritating flies buzzing at a window, but if you're in an area surrounded by a lot of flies and you have your windows and doors open, you can easily get hundreds or thousands of flies, if not more in your building. Yeah, I vote no to that, so. Um, you know, we all have had flies land on our food. So obviously they're, they're eating food that's out. What else do they need to survive? Any specific conditions? Well, like most of the insects we talk about, flies really just need warm temperatures, sometimes moisture and food. You know, the different species will dictate the specifics, but in general, those three things are going to be vital for this group of insects. And a can of bug spray, is that all I need to get rid of them? <laughs> Uh, it can help sometimes, as long as you're reading and following the label directions. What else should we know about that? Like facility yeah. managers and buildings, flies come in, they're getting complaints from those that work in the buildings. Sure. You know, how to get rid of them. I mean, that's always a great question. And I think it's one of the important topics that we, we discuss when we chat about insects. And flight control is a five-step process. Identification, inspection, sanitation, 
preventing them from getting in and applying pesticides. So while a pest management professional is needed for identification, inspection, and applying pesticides, cleaning professionals and building maintenance can perform sanitation and preventative measures to keep those flies out. So when I'm talking about sanitation, you know, I'm talking about getting rid of all of the larval development sites and odors. Don't leave foods out that are going to be attractive to flies. Make sure the environment is clean and there are no foul odors that the flies might find attractive. Make sure you take out the garbage regularly and don't let it sit for too long. And finally, make sure you place liners in all trash cans so garbage residue does not accumulate at the bottom of the can. And as for preventative measures, you know, make sure garbage cans have tight fitting lids and keep the lid on except when you're using that trash can. Make sure all the doors and windows are tight fitting and have no gaps that flies can get through. Uh, keep dumpsters as far away from the building as possible and not near building entrances. Make sure window screens have no holes. Maybe invest in auto shutting doors. Uh, put screens over openings and vents. And I think if I've said this once, I'll say it a hundred times, seal off all cracks and crevices when possible. I have heard you say that in the past. So good advice. I think I'll probably say it again. <laughs> no doubt. That's a great list of tips uh, to use in a facility or even in a home to keep flies at bay. Last question, Jennifer, is the biggest one. What about public health? Tell us how flies impact health. Yeah, unfortunately, these big flies can have a huge impact on public health. There are over 100 different pathogens these flies could spread that cause diseases such as typhoid fever, cholera, diarrhea, tuberculosis, salmonella, and many more. And for these reasons, it's important to keep an area cleaned up and prevent flies from entering. But if they do make their way in, make sure you're disinfecting surfaces with an EPA registered disinfectant and follow the label directions. You know, flies can be a real pain, but there's a lot that cleaning professionals and building maintenance can do to keep buildings and people safe. And if you need any help, don't hesitate to give me a call.